Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar. It is Saturday, the 17th of August, 2018, and today we are live from Dansville, New York, for the Hukalo Ascension Workshop. We have in the room with Jim, we have Jim and Max, and you, Jim, you're going to have to introduce all the 20 people that are in there. I think you're going to just turn around and show us everyone that's there. Here we go. Everyone wave. We have oh. Pam. We have Mary. We have Jake. Chloe. Suzanne. John. Fiona. Merrick. Nepal. Chrissy, Stephanie, Mark, Angie, Safira, Eva, Micheline, Yanya, Maggie, Barbara, Max, and Jim. Awesome. Well, we 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 just have to take your word for it. <laughs> well, on on our side, we have Alyssa, Christine, Don, Ian. We have uh, Lila, Marlene, uh, Reinhard, Sheer, Temple, and then myself. So, um, just to let everyone know, this is the Human Colony webinar. If you would like to be a member of Human Colony, you can go to hukalo.org and you can sign up under forward slash webinars to support Human Colony. So today we're doing our webinar live from the Danville, Dansville Ascension Workshop. They're there for five days learning galactic Reiki telepathy. They're doing channeling. Tell us what you've been doing. <laughs> okay. Well, I think they're going to have to unfreeze for a moment. Actually, we've been doing a lot. We do oh, perfect. Great. Well, I hear nothing. Okay. Just Hello? Wait a second, Christine. Oh, we're yeah, you're frozen. I think that spinning the camera was too much for the. For the uh, <laughs> okay, are we uh, not yet? yet? Not yet. No, let's just give it a moment. Are we in frozen yet? No. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. Well, they've been doing all kinds of workshops up there. Apparently, they're having a grand old time. Um, our internet connection yeah. is a little bit iffy, so. Hmm. Okay. We'll just wait. Up. Oh, there we go. We lost them. They'll come right back on. So anyway, how's everybody doing today? Uh, this is this is uh, what happens when you go into the mountains with no internet and you try to run an entire webinar off of your phone connection. Here we go. They're coming back. Jim. Yeah. We can reconnect. Oh, he's just now reconnecting here. There, that's, that's perfect. Right where you are. Right. Right there. We're back again. We've been doing. We just finished a chakra class this morning, but we've had uh, Reiki classes. We've done telepathy, which was a lot of fun. Uh, we did some telepathy classes. We're going to be doing channeling classes. We're going to be doing galactic Reiki. We're going to be doing more channeling. We're going to be finishing up the chakra class, maybe because we only got to the heart chakra and then we ran out of time. And then, um, but we've been doing great, a lot of uh, good uh, working one with another and a lot of great conversation, a lot of good questions. It's been amazing, really. Oh, that's great. Participation, lots of people participated, yeah. A lot of people are participating and practice of participation in telepathy was really a lot of fun. Reiki as well too. So we're we're still moving forward. We still have a lot to do. That's very good. And we're gonna have a guest speaker this afternoon. Oh yeah? Do you want to tell us who it is or you can't tell? Are we still yeah. are, are we still doing okay? You do it. You're a little blurry but we can hear you so that's okay. Oh she she will pick up the nickname. She doesn't want to go public. She she doesn't want to go public she will pick up a nickname. <laughs> 
but I will be recording. We'll be recording, but um, we'll record it. But she really, she's sort of shy. She doesn't want to go public, but she is doing a special presentation for this workshop. And so we're very grateful. Oh, great. Perfect. Okay. So it's beautiful. All right. So today uh, we have a lot of requests. All right. We have lots of requests. We have a lot of requests. We had Chakur and uh, I believe Grendel and Elijah and then some, maybe you can remind me some of the names that we had that came through. I know they requested Jerry Garcia and someone named Marcel. And then on your side, there was a lot of other requests. Yes. Kwaiya was requested. Um, we had Kutumi uh, and Mother Gaia, Ganesh, Metatron. Uh, Paramahansa um, was requested as well. Yogananda. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're just going to just. Okay, no, we're going to get started then. Yeah, so um, for everyone that's watching on the live uh, webinar, um, we probably will re-upload this video because of the fact that the um, the, the uh, video on that side it's a little bit it's a little bit grainy. But uh, bear with us, and then on the replay, uh, we'll have the full uh, beautiful uh, video that's uh, that's being shot. And if you can, everyone, just send some energy to Max's camera and his internet connection. And hopefully we can uh, we can have a clear picture for the rest of the webinar. <laughs> okay. Is it just me, or are they frozen again, Christine? They're frozen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, they look nice. <laughs> there you guys. Okay. No, that would, that would bring me I think you guys should kill your camera, to be honest, because it's I think it's too much. We'll do it like a radio show. I guess. Okay. Go <laughs> now, right? Okay. Yeah, let's just start. Playing. We're going to do an ohm now to start everything off, get everybody in the same vibration, bring everything into oneness, and that's a and, very and, good thing. And then we continue with the blessings and galactic languages and English yes. or any other human languages. Okay. okay. Let's do a little ohm. Yeah, join us. Does anyone have a blessing? Why don't we take them from your side of the room? And I don't know if anyone from our side has one, please put your yes in the chat and I'll, we'll call on you. But on your side, why don't you go ahead? Okay, we have one person. Safir is going to give a blessing. Okay. The blessings of the universe come to you, and we reach out our hands to deliver them. Thank you. Does anyone on this side have anything? Okay. 
May today's words be blessed and may you honor in them. May you rise up and follow the things that are right for you and right for the world around you. Thank you. Anyone else? Andrew? Andrew? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Inia, titi si ti ki kwa a si si, iti katwa a sa ti, jiuni iti ki kwa a si ti, jiawu ye titi, ini ti ki kwa a, ta ni si ki ni ti ki kwa a u, ti bu kwa i ti ti si ke ke. Lessons that are learned will be put into action. Lessons that are not learned will be forgotten. So be and activate all, all those things within you that, that need stimulated. I think that's it for our side. Okay, Temple has a blessing. Go ahead, Temple. Excellent. Naishoko unati to bo atua nakiti ishgu la ayo no boya natashi kiti ato no kotia lolo bogi um shiatia na hana tiku ono to buluki i ano to obo shiata nisiati i kono o boli aki i o o ma shiata da namste. Thank you. Many small lights that come together make a great light. And that is what is happening with you. Many of you come together and shine brighter than you do as a single unit. Continue to move forward and shine the light through the world so that it may brighten all things. Thank you. It was, it was suggested that maybe. All right. I think that. Oh. Sorry about that. Uh, we I, that's it on our side. Can you hear it? Can you hear me? Would you say? I said that's it on our side. Okay, then we will do. A, I will do a meditation, okay. and we'll see who comes through. Okay, perfect. Also, we we were saying we were just saying maybe the crystal generator you have there can help with the Wi-Fi signal. I don't know if it will way, but. It's sitting right beside the computer. Okay. So perfect. we're hoping that it helps. In fact, yeah. I'm going to say a little prayer in my meditation that our signal gets stronger and that the information can come through more clearly. It's gotten more clear in the last uh, two minutes, so that's good. So, yeah, keep going. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Okay. All right. I'm going to do a meditation. We'll see who comes first. Okay. Greetings, I am Elijah. Greetings, Elijah. Welcome. Thank you. There's been much talk about light today. How small lights coming together make great lights, and how the greater the light is, the lesser the darkness is. 
I beseech all of you to come together as a group of lights so that you may shine and the energy of that heat, if you will, can be felt around the world. There are many things that need to happen in the world today before enlightenment comes to it. And of course, there will be those that reject enlightenment. But let me tell you this, the joy, the compassion and love that I feel in this room and the light from your heat, the heat from your light, I should say, is very apparent. Continue to burn. For the desire of your heart is to help others, to move forward, to bring a message to the world of understanding, to bring first contact, to be a community of beauty, of light, and of souls that care for one another, that lift one another up. It is time for this message to become more apparent in the world. Yes, you have many religions and you have many of those speaking out on behalf of God, but some of the information that they bring is more topical than it is spiritual. And so you need to bring a fire to that information, the fire of the spirit to that information, not the fire of the world's understanding, but the fire of God's understanding. And that is a totally different understanding altogether. Remember, he is not here to judge you on the little bad things that you do, if you want to call them that, but he is here to look at your beauty, to look at how much love you can give. Look at your compassion and your joy and how much your example helps the world and how much your activity helps the world. He is not here to look at petty things. He is not here to dwell in your likes or dislikes. He is not here to make you feel uncomfortable with him. But he is here to be an ally with you in all ways. He was, is here to strengthen you in your compassion, your confidence, your love, your joy, your movement forward, the reduction of spiritual pain. the reduction of physical pain if you are working for him. Rise up. And there's more than one way to rise up. You can rise up in spirit. You can rise up in voice. You can rise up in tones of positive reinforcement. You can rise up in action. You can rise up in energy, in prayer. You can rise up in any way that you feel necessary to help those around you to rise up as well. This is not about your popularity. This is not about everyone looking at you. This is about everyone looking at each other. Everyone loving one another. Everyone supporting one another. Everyone lifting one another. Because without this kind of action, What will happen? 
not much. One fire burning alone. Oh yes, that is a good thing. But many fires burning together. That is a great force. And you are that force. There is information coming to you at this workshop and to your homes and to your environments that you cannot deny and that you are happy to receive. Use it. Let it become part of you so that you may spread it. Let it become a part of you so that you can use it as fuel for your fire. God is your fire. But if you do not talk to him, acknowledge him, or use him, he is in the background. But now we see he is coming to the forefront. Love him. Embrace him. And know him. He wants to know you. That is all I have to say for today. And I know that sometimes before I leave, there are many questions and I leave without answering them. But there was a reason for that. My reason for leaving sometimes with questions on your mind is so that you will ponder those questions yourself and not always have someone to give you every answer, but find the answers on your own so that you may be able to grow without someone whispering in your ear always. You have the ability to rise, but do not use an unanswered question as an, a reason not to do something. Do not let an unanswered question be the reason to fail. Do not let an unanswered question stop you from forward movement. So that is why I do not always answer questions. That is why I leave things burning on your lips so that fire will take hold of some kind of action. Uh, we'll, uh, take a short so that will burn in a different way than it has before. Remember that. Much love to you. And many blessings. And I will be back some other time. Much love to you, Elijah. Namaste. Thank you for the beautiful message. Mm Greetings. -hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Greetings. I came after Elijah because you need balance. Mm. <laughs> you know. Balance is important. <laughs> but I I just wanted to come here because I uh, I'm involved in a lot of very important work in Israel and in other places. They've been sending me out to speak to other world uh, world leaders as well. <coughs> Sometimes that's not an easy job because they have their own uh, they have their own agenda and they don't listen well. 
But I want to tell you, please listen well. It's important in this day and age for you to be a listener, not only a talker. <coughs> Would you hand me that water, dear? Yeah. Thank you. He has some kind of pond something in his throat. I'm not sure. Um, but be a good listener at this time because this is an age where there's too many people talking and not enough people listening. They're saying what they think is the truth, but they really haven't digested all the information. Remember that when you are listening to someone to think about what they're saying, have they digested all the information that they needed to be speaking about what they're speaking about? Sometimes I hear some of these uh, channelers, I'm sorry, but they are trying to say something they don't even know what they're talking about. <laughs> and you laugh because you know what I mean. I just laugh at me. Because uh, they'll you. say 1,700 words and not a single one of those, uh, not a single thing in there made any sense. Oh, the beauty of the sacrifice came out of the earth and it is became a bright light and I was oh please <laughs> sorry but you hear these people and other people are going oh my god what great wisdom yeah <laughs> You understand that they are spouting off their words to sound intellectual, but to bring no absolutely nothing to your edification, except to say, hey, didn't they sound great? What did they say? I don't know. <laughs> but you know me, I call it a spade a spade. and. And that I've been listening some to some of these uh, channelers that are have these great flourishes of vocabulary and beautiful poetry as what they're talking about. But to decipher what they're saying, I have no idea. And some of them will be saying things about the uh, things coming down and going up and and promises and all kinds of things, but there's no grounding in it. It's all ungrounded. It's all floating around in the air. And there's no grounding. Whenever you listen to a channel or ground yourself, ground yourself. And if you sit there and going, what? Then you're going to change the channel because you're going to know that you're grounded and they're not. Now, the people in this room, I have been hanging out here. Oops, shouldn't say that. But I have been hanging out here a little bit, especially since it's a weekend. <laughs> but I love the energy here. I do. I love it. It's a really great energy. It's a really nice group of people. But they're listeners. And they ask a lot of wonderful and great questions because they really want to learn. They really want to make a difference. Yeah, and that is important. So I will answer questions, even though Elijah won't. Uh, I understand what he's saying, though. But if there's any questions for me, let me know. There is a question in the room. Okay, go ahead. Oh, good, good. Hi, Grindel. I'm so happy to hear your voice. It's just grounding me by you talking, but 
Whenever you feel like pulling my legs down, feel free. I pull your legs down all the time, honey. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. I feel privileged. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I have some um, questions which are very straight to the point. Yeah. Um, we hear about these um, some general questions. One private. Uh, I hear some about these fires, right? These fires yeah. and lasers. If these are really laser fires, who is doing that? Well, there was one laser fire, and that is true. But there's not a lot of them. That's that's a, a rumor that's been, uh, they, they heard about one, and so they decided that there must be a, at least 100,000 of them or so. But no, there wasn't one laser fire, and uh, and that was an accident. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Somebody... Uh, was uh, doing some experimental work right out in the solar system, and it happened to hit a forested area. So um, these kinds of things are not permitted by the galactic government to happen. So you know it's not going to be hundreds or even tens of laser fires. But your planet is plagued with a lot of people that want to harm it. Unintentionally, right now. So that is one thing that is happening. People are harming the planet intentionally, and knowing that it's in bad shape to begin with, they're not trying to help. But there's a lot of other people that are trying to help. So that's good. I have another question about um, general about Amazon.com. It seems yeah. to be growing and growing. Is that positive entity or how do you perceive it? Yeah, it's a business. It's a business. It's a business, yes. Um, uh, they, they, they're they there to make a profit. So you will see that that is their main goal. I don't think they have any other intentions that I know of. Okay. And I want to ask one personal question as well. As you know, there are a lot of attacks on me, and the question is, did anything of, I think last night something happened of a sort, but it was so different that I really don't know if it happened or not, and I decided not to get sick after I get hit, because I cannot get sick here, it's yes. just like not possible to throw up, you know, with pleasure. So, did it happen? or did not what happened last night well a lot of people are feeling some weird things here when they go and are separated from the group am i right yes many people feel uh things happening to them when they separate from the group and that is uh they're getting little personal attacks they no one can really hurt you here but they can try to make you uncomfortable so you don't learn as much as you're supposed to, but it's not working. Surprise. <laughs> Everybody's coming back and they're feeling the strength of the group once again. Even though they might have had some attacks, I know at least half of you have felt some attacks. But you come into the group and it's gone. It's Everything is back to normal. So do not worry about that. They cannot harm you. They are there to try to make you un a little uncomfortable for being here because they know what, what's going on here. They know that there's some good stuff happening. Balance. I came for balance. And they came to put you off balance. So balance, well, but once you get with the group, you're back in the balance completely. So just look at it that way. And I know that some of these attacks have been actually pretty harsh. Some people cried. Some people felt uh, beings around them. Some people felt uh, hit or touched or some people got knocked down. But when you come into the group, it changes, doesn't it? I think so, yeah.
Thank you so much. Last year it was so wonderful when you were with us during bonfire. I have I hope something like this will happen this year too. Thank you. Yeah, somebody's uh, trying to make a film of my life uh, or that that particular uh, campfire uh, experience. So that's an interesting thing. Yeah. Hello, Gringo. Greetings. I have two questions. Yes. First one. Yeah, okay. First one. How can people protect themselves better from the Dracos? I have heard that some are being quite attacked and there's not much anyone can do because they're so high dimensional. That's my first question. Should I wait to ask my second yeah, question? Yeah, the reason they are high dimensional and they're here for a reason. But guess what? People are being strengthened by the very fact that they're not dying from the Dracos. They're going to recover and find ways to fight them off in even greater ways than they're doing now. There are there are some defenses against them. I'm not gonna go into that because they'll hear me and I don't want them to know what the defenses are. But they are out there and they are being used. Thank you. My second question is for Liney. I think you know Liney. She's yes. in England. Yeah. She had a scratch on her left leg. It was a very sloppy scratch and she didn't know where it came from and today she discovered when she touched it there was something round and moving when she touched it and made it plant was that never, what, who made such a sloppy scratch was that a reptilians oh okay. how can she get rid of that do you know i'll take care of it oh thank you so yeah much. thank you okay yeah i already knew about that but i have to there's certain things i a certain um protocols I have to go through before I can fix that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, uh, Grindel. My name is Fiona. I have a Greetings. question before. Greetings. And I'm asking this question to you as a job. Yeah. Uh, Welcome. This morning we had a class on chakras and I was asking a question about the reptilian brain and the development of the human. And I wanted to know from your viewpoint, you know, I know we have a lot of uh, the Zikas that are not implants. Uh, we've had a lot of genetic uh, input from the different species. Oh, yes, that's true. Uh, so what do you see in us uh, as, as um, influenced by reptiles? And also, second question, uh, how can the reptiles, our friendly reptiles, of course, uh, help us in our um, spiritual development? Actually, that's a really good question. How many times have you ever heard anyone ask for spiritual development from a reptile? Hey, I don't think so. But yes, we do have a spiritual life. And you're right. We did contribute to part of Earth's uh, DNA pool, if you will. And so that's the uh, one part of the, your DNA pool from a very, very long time ago that gave you a lot of good immunity and things of that nature. Of course, there's some species that have very poor immunities, which counteracted in, in time with certain things. But as a, a positive blend, you're doing all right. But as far as spirituality, as far as reptilians are concerned, we do have a spirituality. It's not quite the same as yours our gods look more reptilian than yours of course your gods look more human uh the pleiadian gods look more pleiadian that's just the way god works with each mind with each deity they come <coughs> in a familiar way so that you may understand yes thank you <coughs> I guess talking like this doesn't help the throat. Um, no, but no. yes, there is, um, we do have our own spirituality and we do have our own way of believing in God, yes. We understand he's energy. We just like to look at him as a, a, a reptilian, just like you like to look at him as a human and Pleiadians like to look at him as a Pleiadian, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you. We have a question yeah. on our side, if we can. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. 
Is it okay to go on this? Are you yeah, still in the room? Yeah, or? we're good over here, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, Christine has a question. Yeah. Grindel, how are you doing? Uh, I'm very well, thank you. Yeah. I was going to ask you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a bit confused um, because you touched on the subject about um, different people channeling and whatnot. And I'm believing that um, people who read cards or who um, delve into the future or who try to help other people with their um, belief on what's happening in the world um, are channeling also to an extent. So what yeah. I can't understand is why some of them have such opposing views. Is it them personally? If there's an opposing view, one is negative and one is positive. Is that true? One is frightening and one is not. <laughs> But whether it's negative or not, it depends. What is frightening to you? Let me tell you this. Okay. When someone brings frightening information into your realm, they're trying to deal with your base. <clears throat> they're trying to change the base of how you believe. They are trying to put fear into your thought processes so that can stop you from moving forward. Usually fear-based messages stop you from wanting to do things, stop you from wanting to go outside or fly in airplanes or trust people or trust other culture, nature. Any fear-based message is only the tip of the iceberg negativity trying to tell you what they want you to believe and understand about them but they are far worse than that <clears throat> so let me tell you do not listen to fear-based messages what good is that it makes you afraid it makes you overly cautious caution is good but not over cautious over cautious is not good you must be brave, confident, and move into the world knowing who you are with a message, with a positive way of helping or healing or whatever it is. A negative message does none of that. It, it does not edify humanity. Nah. Nah. It brings humanity to a standstill in many cases. Yeah. So if you want to stand still and not move forward, listen to all the fear-based messages. There's a million of them out there, but they're not going to bring you any information that's going to help you. You may say, oh, but I, I know my enemy now. Guess what? You don't. That is what they want you to think that you know. But what is the beginning of that message is far worse than what they want you to hear. So you actually really don't know them. You are only hearing part of the message. The best way to defend yourself against evil or negativity is be extremely positive and confident that your positivity is going to push through the negativity and destroy anything that's bad otherwise you're not prepared for what the negativity is telling you how can you prepare for negativity if that's all you listen to you must prepare to fight negativity with positivity so if you hear something negative, you better counteract it. You better go and say, what can I do positively to help get rid of that or to move through that or to uh, make sure that I don't get caught up in that. So when you hear positive messages, they encourage you to be more positive and move forward, correct? But if you hear negativity, oh, 
Yeah, they're sabotaging all the planes. Oh, well, I have this really wonderful conference I want to go to, but I don't want to fly anymore. Maybe I just won't go. I don't want to do that anymore. Maybe I just won't go. They're trying to stop you from forward movement. Do you see that one simple example? Oh, all the brakes and all the certain kind of cars don't work anymore. All right, well, I think I'll stop driving for a couple days. Yeah. Now, you must push forward, be confident, know who you are, and live in the knowledge that God is on your side, not, not the opposite. With God for you, who can be against you? I think that's in your own scriptural works. Yes, it is. It's in the Bible. Yeah, all right, yeah, Bible, yeah, that thing. <laughs> um, but you know what I'm saying here. Thank you, Grendel, for Thank talking you, about Grindel, this. For talking it's, about it's, it's, a, it's a subject it's a, near, a, to my heart, near to my heart because I've seen yeah. conspiracy <laughs> infiltrating the spiritual world and i don't think that the two can coexist they can't and i don't think that yeah what you're saying all of this fear and all of these conspiracies of you know deep state and and all of this cabal nonsense does anything but distract people from again knowing who they are and building the future that they say yeah. they want be believing that they are creator beings either you believe it or you don't so thank you so much for, for saying that. But can you give some advice on some of the very specific things that are being tossed around now? Just well, hmm. I want to tell you, say this. When you look at great leaders, where, when you're looking at your great leaders of the world that have been very influential in positive ways, do you hear them talking about negativity? Very rarely. Exactly. Mark Luther King on top. An incredibly positive message, even though what he saw was not all positive. He spoke about moving forward. No matter what he saw, he was going to move forward because he was not afraid of the consequences because he knew God was on his side. Yeah. People like your, your great spiritual leaders that were not afraid to stand up and change the way they heard or whatever. They saw what was coming. They saw what was coming. Are you telling me they did it, but they didn't talk about it? They talked about the positivity that would come out of it because they were following what God said they should do and knew that God was going to protect them. And they, they changed the world. If they would have listened to the negativity, they would have stopped. No, the world would have not been changed. People would not know the truth. People would not understand certain things about the world, but they were strong in their purpose and that they were right. And so they moved ahead no matter what the consequences. And that's how you change the world. You stand up for what is right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Leela has a question. Go ahead, Leela. Hi, hi, stranger. Leela, yeah. Uh, I wanted to bring a I wanted to bring a correction hi. to a comment or question before. Ish, yeah. Ish is draconian ascended master. Correct. Leela 
and a spiritual advisor. Of and course. each is the one who is connected to this group. So we cannot say that we do not know any draconian who are spiritual advisor. Just to remind oh, you true. all. But some people don't know Ish. So you, you well, if, if they don't know Ish, then they, they couldn't, they, I'm, then, yeah. I am introducing Ish as a person yeah. who is connected to Hukolo group, if anybody wants to connect to draconian spiritual advisor, that's him. That was only the correction. Uh, okay. The next question what I would like to have is about Gaia grid. There are reptilian grids grid around Gaia and Archon. Can you give us update about those grids? And which one is off and which one is still on? The grids are being managed by reptilians and I by many different species that have been here for eons, that have been on the earth for long, long before there was any rules and regulations about people, uh, aliens being on earth. And, uh, and they're sort of grandfathered in, if you will, to the fourth dimensional species that are there or fifth dimensional species that are controlling grids and things of that nature. But you see prophecy comes before that they're able to uh, change anything. They know what the prophecies are. So they look out for these things when it comes to uh, grid information. So if it's not in the prophecies, if it's not part of what should be, then they correct it. And let me tell a lot of corrections. But um, the thing is, there are some things that have to be left alone because they are part of the Bible of the universe, if you will. So they're managing them very well. So that means it's not an issue to worry about it. You can't worry about it. Okay, perfect. You cannot make All a right. difference. Wonderful. Yeah. You can pray about it that what is supposed to happen happens. And you right. can pray about it that God is watching as closely as possible. But there is not much you can do about it. Well, that's great. It's lost, I mean, less work for me. Wonderful. Uh, I heard that I am slapping repeat. Yeah, I heard a uh, few times that I'm slapping, slapping reptilians in astro and i think that's really funny so do you know why i am You're slapping, slapping reptilians? yep why would you slap them yeah, yeah. Uh, i assume i mean, some of them i i assume but I know why any human in the astral would be allowed to slap them but yeah it's a possibility i guess but the, the thing is if they if you slap them is that a positive thing or a negative thing well that's the question because, because I some don't... of them might enjoy it i just just say it <laughs> ah. well that is the question because i don't remember uh asking. oh okay because right. you know if you slap some of these reptilians uh they have such a hard crust it might just tickle or something so uh, i don't know what that's all about <laughs> yeah thanks Okay, that's good. Uh, the last question will be, uh, can you, I don't know if you are the right one, uh, can you give me update on my um, healing on, on my heart chakra? If it's in process, how is the process going? Healing on your heart chakra? Yes, healing on my own heart chakra. How is the process? It is doing very well. Once you intend for it to heal, it starts to heal. Keep your belief system strong. Everyone can heal their heart chakra area if they wish. Keep it strong, believe you can do it and it can happen, yeah. And you're doing fine. Okay, thank you. That's what's all. You're off. Remember everybody, your chakras can be healed by yourself. You can Put your own energy into your chakra system and help yourself. 
It's not a, everybody. Uh, it's not having to go to somebody to go, always get your chakras aligned. Your chakras are your own personal energy systems. Sometimes it's best if you work on them yourself because if you go to the wrong person, they may throw you out of whack. So do it yourself because you'll be gentle with yourself, I'm sure. All right. Okay. Um, David has a question for you. David. Hello, yeah. Brenda. Good to speak to you. The, uh, yes. There's a little delay. Um, I was I was attacked, and I'm and I've been feeling really really weird this past week, kind of up and down in my energy. And I'm curious about any information about what's been going on this week. If there's been any more attacks there's, from negative spirits or anything. There's attacks constantly on your planet. I mean, it's a daily uh, daily thing with different people that have healing modalities or psychic energies or things that are positive for humanity. They're, people that are trying to actually move forward, those are the ones that get attacked sometimes because they want to stop that process. And if they think they can do it, they will attack. And if you, if you are the kind of person that if you get attacked, you stop everything, well, they win, yay. So um, you don't wanna stop moving forward. But yes, attacks are happening all the time. Who did it? Not sure. There's so many out there doing it uh, and they're not really permitted to do it, but they're not doing it in the third dimension. So they are doing it from other dimensional aspects. So it, it makes it hard to find them because a lot of them are from now very higher dimensional areas. So just don't let that keep you from moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And I say hello to everyone there in the, in the group. Your energy's a little better today. Your energy's better today. Yeah. Question in the room. Yeah, question in the room. Okay. Yeah. Like recently, not only recently, that my things are disappearing, literally disappearing. Yeah, and yeah. Sometimes they are being found in a strange way, like I lost a wallet which was found in the car. Chloe was lost a wallet in another car, right? Or um, my glasses got <clears throat> lost and they were brought back by aliens and elementals. So I wonder, you know what's happening with this disappearing and yeah 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 how yeah. can i say thank you to those to element who, who are the elementals who helped yeah they and hear how you can i say thank you you already did they hear everything you say so you if you're saying thank you right now every elemental on the planet is going hey what she thanked an elemental the news will get to them believe me they're a big 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 circuit so um, that information will get around. The other thing that is uh, things that are being stolen, I, that's happening a lot too. But there are people around you that are protecting you. Those are the people that bring things back, the elementals or whoever. But there are Vril, there are other species that are kleptomaniacs, That's and they're... Um, they just take things that they think are pretty and stuff, and they, uh, the elementals will bring them back if you're friends with them. So uh, the thing is, sometimes they'll, you'll lose something and you'll never find it ever again because they have taken it out of your, it's out of phase with even reality. Not that it, not that it doesn't exist anymore, but it's in their realm. They put it in their realm. So um, yeah, you have a, a few of these nasty kind of species around. Do not, if if you have any problem, somebody says the Varil are here, run for your life. They're bacteria, germs, they're, eh, they're terrible. Yeah. Another question. Yeah, there's another question in here. Is that okay? Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Yeah. 
Mm. I'm going to come back to what Karen was speaking of because we've been having personal conversations about politics. Yeah. Oh, yeah, politics. Conspiracies. And I don't want to spend more time than we have to because I, I'm also wanting to concentrate on the positive. Now, these conspiracy theories, is there any truth to them? Because some of these testimonies are very compelling. There's a tribunal. I, don't know, I can't remember the name of it. Like the yeah. Tribunal. Mm -hmm. I can listen to some of these people talk. I mean, who are these people? Are there, they saying anything truthful? Or There's always truth in it, of course. But it's never the full truth. But the thing is about these people that are, are exposing these negative things, if they, if they expose it to you, pray about it, but don't let it affect your forward movement. Do not let it affect who you are in a positive way. I warn against these negative messages that stop people from being who they are or doing what they have to do. But if you're listening to a conspiracy theory, of course there's always some truth to it somewhere. But the thing is, if you let it uh, bring you down or change uh, the way you think about your forward motion, then you should stop listening to them. If you're strong enough to say, okay, yeah, that's all, I understand that, but I'm still going to do what I'm going to do, that's fine. That's fine. Would it be fair to say that all the positivity in politics that is happening for those people who are unaware of other dimensions and they believe that what they're doing mm -hmm. is to help humanity? And I know a person like this. And yeah, yeah. And you know who I'm talking about. Absolutely. And anyway. I work, okay. let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. I work for the government in Israel. They think they're doing good. They all do. Oh, they all believe that what, they, what they're what they setting out to do is good. Most of them. I would say most of them. And they're saying this has to be done because this will bring this and this and this. And so that's good. But what they don't realize is that this and this and this does not bring that. And I agree with you. They think they are headed in the right direction, yeah, but they are deceived because they're not spiritual minded, they're third dimensional. And you need some spirituality to keep you on track. I say that with all the love in the world because some of these guys are very caring people. Some of these ladies are very caring people but they do not see a spiritual uh, portion in what they're doing. And there is also always a spiritual aspect to whatever you do. Think about that. You're sitting here, you're having a, your dinner. A spiritual aspect of dinner is that it is feeding your not only physical body, but the part of your body that holds the spirit as well. So everything you do, look at it as a spiritual activity. And some people go, well, then I have to stop doing that. No, just bring spirit to it. Don't stop doing it. Just bring spirit to it and make it a, a even better. You got that? Even all the things you, that the world says are nasty and you do well if you're doing negative things stop that yeah definitely yeah but if you're doing things of third dimension that are part of who you are and part of the the system that you were made to do just bring spirituality to it you don't have to stop doing it you just bring spirituality to it you just say god oh this is beautiful thank you um you don't have to stop it. You understand that? Yeah. Don't make everything negative. Don't don't uh, cut off your arm because you think it's negative. You have to use all things God gave you. He gave it to you for a reason. He likes you. All right? Yeah.
Where? Yeah. Where? Hi, okay. Mandel. My name, oh. is, my name is Jenny. It's my first time talking to you. Greetings. Hi. Uh, it's a small technical question, not philosophical. I uh, just want to hear your perspective. Yeah, yeah. Um, working with chakras. Uh, is uh, this approach helpful uh, in toning its uh, responding frequencies? Yeah. Tony is a fabulous way to do several things. What is your intention for toning is what happens with toning. Now, simple glass of water. Sometimes you'll get a glass of water and you'll know that there's maybe a little impurity in there. If you tone for that glass of water or you put your own energy into that glass of water with the intention of purifying it, you can do that. You can purify things with toning and pure energy. Now, use that as your intention. Yeah, yeah. So whenever you're going to a lake to swim, you can tone over the lake and purify the water, make it so that you're there's nothing harmful there for you. You can tone over a mountain to make sure that you there's nothing going to harm you when you're climbing or whatever. There is many ways to use gifts of this nature, but they've all nobody knows about them because the negativity of the world doesn't want you to be to to have all this knowledge. They don't want you to know that there's so much positivity there. And that you can do a lot of good with it. They'd rather throw the fear at you and say, oh, don't climb that mountain. You're going to break a leg. But you can tone on the mountain. You can send energy to the mountain. And you, you can be perfectly fine. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Very well. Another question. Are there more questions in the room? Back, yeah, back to me again, Shane. All right. So... We're talking about negative forces against the positive forces, aren't we? Of course. Okay. So this is also a conspiracy. This is something else that, you know, and I've, I've lived some of this stuff, so I'm a proof that it is happening. It's not just, it's not imaginings. Right, exactly. So what I'm getting at is this can be also seen as a conspiracy. You can look at anything as a conspiracy, dear. I uh, know, I see that. I, I, and I'm not talking for myself in particular. Well, I know, but uh, the negativity is there. You just have to work through it in your most positive way. All right. So, I mean, this. I'm trying to get to the heart of the matter, Karen, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want to jump in and help me out, I'm, yeah. I'm all ears. Uh, well, conspiracy f theories are everywhere. You will find them even in your neighborhood, even in your family union. So it is, they are there to bring about whatever they can do to bring you down. Your family can sometimes be your biggest downfall because they are, they are conspiring to have their own way in a certain situation. And you have to stand your ground if you don't believe it's right. There's conspiracies everywhere. But choose your battles. Choose your battles because some of the, you can just say, all right, you go do your thing. I just choose not to. Or you can just say, I am here and I believe this. And I'm sorry that you feel that way, but I can't get involved with that. Sometimes a conspiracy theory can just be put aside but sometimes you can't all right okay we have some questions on our side just to very uh, good uh share yeah. the question and then i'm going to go to some questions from the chat and then we'll come back for david so sherry go ahead yeah yeah hey Grindel, how are you yeah i'm hanging in there sheer yeah yeah well first of all i've passed all my tests officially 
I knew that you would, didn't we tell you? Yep, yep. Um, second of all, yesterday, around uh, this hour, maybe half hour earlier, all of a sudden I felt not ill, but I felt very weak and I had uh, fever. And uh, after like two or three hours, it passed, but it it seemed extremely strange. It just came all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. Never experienced something like that. The attacks are coming in every way possibly imaginable. And so don't rule anything out. And there are some attacks that are so violent at this time. Can you hear me? Yeah. Some attacks are so violent and they go to the hospital. And they're actually showing physical signs of attack. And the doctor is saying, there's nothing wrong with you. Man, I, I can't find anything. Uh, well, what is this physical manifestation if there's nothing wrong with me? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah. This week, my father felt very ill, and we need yeah. to take to have fluids and stuff like that. Can you see if it was an attack or something else? Because uh, partially attack. Yeah. I. Uh, I helped him get over that a little bit. He's still recovering. Do you know who, who attacked him? Uh, I, I'm not going to talk about that right now. Yeah, yes, I do know who. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We'll talk soon. I think this thing could keep this thing keeps going off and on. So I don't know. Okay, um, there's a question from uh, Firstborn. He he's saying, Grindel, uh, please speak on insectoids, the positive and the negative ones. Yeah, there's both. There is positive and negative insectoids. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The negative ones are sending a lot of uh, implants. Mostly that's how they're attacking humans. They're not actually coming into the physical realm and attacking. They're sending implants which stop vital uh, processes in the system and they need to be removed. So we've caught many of them and removed many of them. Now the positive ones are allies with many different uh, uh, councils and alliances and federations. And there are um, actually, unfortunately, there's more negative insectoids than positive, but there are positive ones that have moved over to the, the positive realm. So. Uh, they are helping with uh, certain allies, such as the Council of Nine, uh, the Whale and Dolphin Alliance of Pleiadians and Andromeda. There are certain alliances that they really help a lot. Okay, thank so you. So that's all I can really say about that at the moment. Okay, and then uh, Michelle Euro would like to have you speak on the archons and what we need to do to get rid of to get rid um, to rid ourselves of their influences and then she that wants to know what are their influences <laughs> <laughs> so I think yeah okay <laughs> well the thing is what if you're a species such as the archons you can influence people in a lot of different ways they are one of the greatest media workers. The Archons uh, work with the media a lot. And uh, uh, the, within the last 20, 5, 30 years, the media has gone so corrupt that it's rare that you find a really true story by the media. It's always twisted in some way to sensationalize it or make people want to listen to it. They, the truth about the media is that they need, they feel that they are being threatened because newspapers are going out of style and different things and reporting has to be sensational in order for it to be, stay viable. And so the archons are working in, in media for the most part. And the way to do that is to find the, uh, to uh, hire honest media people, but you know what? They can be bought. They can be bought, and they are being bought. So I just I will mention that 
as one of the influences. They do have other ones, but I will not go into that. And I don't want everybody to know where they are because we're working to get rid of them in other places and we're getting close to being successful. So don't want to say anything. Okay, well, can you give some uh, ideas about then if you're saying basically all media yeah. is, is influenced? Well, not not all media. I come from I, the media world, so I would challenge that um, because I, I have a lot of very media. honest reporters who work very hard to present a very fair and very accessible uh, story. But so, yeah. can you please give some examples of of well, how that's say, There's a lot of twisted media people in the United States. I, I, I know that the, some things are marketing. There's clickbait. There's clickbait uh, marketing yeah. uh, things that make people. There click are. On, there's. I didn't say there weren't honest reporters. I said they're being bought. A lot of there's a lot of them that are bought, and a lot of the information is twisted, especially from the larger media areas. Okay. So, okay. But smaller media areas have no reason to be dishonest. Uh, because they're everybody's happy with them, and they're they don't they don't feel threatened. But there are larger areas of the media that do feel threatened and are sensationalizing. Mm, okay, uh, Sheer has a question. Go ahead, Sheer. Or did you did you ask? No, sorry. Was it Sheer? Did you ask your question already? Yeah, yeah I asked my question already. Okay, then we get, we have Dave again. Go ahead, Dave. Hello. Yeah. So I have a question about channeling. I uh, was channeling for the Hukulo group, uh, channeling Jesus, and I'm wondering, I felt, kind of, well, I had just been recovered from being attacked. So I, I channeled for a little while, and I, afterwards I felt the energy really powerful, and my eyes, when I came out of it, were yeah. kind of blurry and dizzy, and I'm curious about about this effect and also if it was an effective channel of no it wasn't a channeling will not ever leave you disoriented or never leave you weak and it will never leave you uh in any negative state at all if you're channeling the positive true person that you said you were channeling they would leave you energized happy and full of energy so if you experience something afterwards, that was an attack. Okay. Very good. Because there is no way, there is no way that uh, uh, channeling Jesus would make you feel negative in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, just slightly dizzy or the eyes are just, well, the energy felt no. good. I mean, I felt, it felt like really powerful energy. Well, that would maybe be him, but no negativity. No, not just kind of dizzy afterwards, like lightheaded or. Yeah, listen carefully. No negative energy would, he would not give you any negative energy. Dizziness, no, wouldn't do it. Beautiful. Did, what, did I connect with him though? I mean, did I channel any? You can only answer that. Okay. And the people that were listening will answer that. I wasn't there, so I really can't answer that. But I know that when he leaves you, he's not going to leave any negative effects. Jesus will never leave a negative. Never. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank okay. you very much. Much love. Hi, much love. Does Jim need some water? Because you're sounding a little grindier than no, me. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Christine has a question. I believe. Yeah. Christine? Hello, Grindel again. Um, I wanted Christine. to ask <laughs> you put the fear of implants in me, but um, do I have any in me? I don't see any reason why. I'm not all that a threat to anyone. No, you, I don't think you have any implants in you, dear, but we'll check and make sure. Okay. And um, my, I can't do that right this second, but uh, I'll do it later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. My other question is, and I think I know the answer, it's just that I want to be, you know, a little uh, encouragement. Um, 
Is there a way that we can help the media through prayer or the uh, mantas through prayer? Of course. Prayer helps in every in every way. Okay. There's an energy to prayer that's not like any other energy in the universe. Uh -huh. Prayer is an energy all of its own. And when you use prayer as an energy, it is very powerful. You, there have been studies made on your world and many other worlds that show that when people are being prayed for, they recover faster. They don't even have to believe in God. They don't even have to believe anything. But the very fact that people are praying for them is a positive thing to their health and to their uh, demeanor even. Uh, it shows that it showed that those patients that were being prayed for and were much happier and and the ones that did not have the prayer some of them did not recover you know some of the things that kind of bother me um yeah me hesitate is when i'm thinking well maybe this is what they came in the world for and I'm interfering with it. And that makes me halt, and I can't believe that. Um... No, no, prayer will always take the right route. You okay. never can pray wrong. Let me explain. If they are meant to pass, they will pass, no matter what you pray for. However, their passing will be better easier and more uh, more in line with the spirit. Now, if you hadn't prayed, uh, if, if many of you weren't praying for them, they may not have passed as easy. They may have had a rougher time, but if they're supposed to pass, they will pass. I can tell you the incidences where the prayer has been a great blessing to those people that knew they were going to pass because Patients with pancreatitis or things of that nature that have great amount of pains before they pass, this can really help relieve the pain so that they can pass more easily. Now, I would, yes. go ahead. But I was going to say, if they are not supposed to pass, it will also help recover much faster. I was thinking along the lines of a peop, um, people who are miserable <laughs> or suffering yeah. from PTSD or, you know, whatever that is, and all these yeah. other things that maybe I'm interfering yeah. with their um, process. No, 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 no. God will let the process teach them no matter what you do. You may help in areas that you have no idea that you're helping. Prayer never is a negative, has a negative connotation. Never. Prayer Would never has a negative, never. Which is the same as sending in um, rectum or um, it's the same thing? Sending what? I didn't get that word. Oh, sending reggae. Sending Reiki is positive energy from good intentions for healing. And that never is a negative either. Okay. It can make people feel better. It can uh, change emotional uh, stabilities and things of that nature. So, yeah, it's always good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Grindel. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> We don't have any other questions on our side, so. Is the mic working? The mic's no. working. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. No, it's not. Yeah, I'm just putting it down, making my arm tired. <laughs> okay. Yeah, how's that? Fine. Better? Oh, yeah, it was working again. We don't have any All questions right, left on our side. All these wishy washy machines here. All right, what's next? We don't. We don't have any other questions. Okay. Yeah, they have a question in the room. Okay. All right, don't make your hand tired. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. yeah. I have a question about my channel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, I really want to know, but I'm a little afraid what you're going to say, but just say it. Yeah. Um, I seem to be really channel for others with ease, and I hear beings and I see visions, but yeah. when I want to channel for myself, there's some luck. Yeah, I yes, understand. Please comment. Yes. When you're channeling for yourself, you don't need to hear a voice out loud. It can just come into your head. Allow it to come into you and in the way of a thought process. Don't worry if it's being spoken out loud or not. Your channeling for yourself when you know it's for yourself can come as a thought process. And I think that it probably does. And you just don't realize that you're channeling it into your own thought process. Because... Um, many times when people are trying to channel for themselves, they don't really hear it. So how do I know that's better channeling and not my own thoughts, which can be, you know, three-dimensional? Because you believe that it is a channeled message. Do not believe that you are just talking to yourself. Many people believe they are talking to themselves when there are other beings talking to them, listen to what it has to say. Is this something that you would say to yourself? I this for like a bell at the beginning of. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you can't. No. Okay. <laughs> no bells for you, baby. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Next. Is there someone online, or is it time? For for me to go. I, uh, David has a question. Go ahead, David. Yo. Hello. <clears throat> um, yeah. Recently, I found out a friend of mine, her uh, mother ha has cancer, and I wanted to see if there was anything that you might do or, or recommend in regards to the, my healing yeah. for her to yes. help her. Or Eliaha or the Tepath from the Gurkhpikneer area to come and give her some assistance. You can pray for her. You can send her Reiki. There are several things you can do uh, for her, but keep in mind she must, uh, if, if uh, she's accepting help from Gurkhpikneer or Eliaha, that she has to know who they are and accept them. Oh, yeah. okay. That's all. Yeah. She, they yeah. can help her without her being some, uh, accepting them, but it's a much harder process. Yeah. It's best for acceptance so that when they send infusions or whatever, she'll bring that into her system and not uh, shun them. Okay. Yeah. That's important to know. And she's like, oh, okay, that'll be it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Okay, um, oh. thank you. We have questions from the chat. Uh, Firstborn wants yeah, to ask yeah. you, Grendel, if you connect to Kalisk. I know who that is, but we don't connect. Okay. Um, I don't connect to a lot of people that are well-known um, and spirits that are well-known and the aliens that are well-known, but um, I have my own group that I really like to connect to. But I love humans more than I like some of these other groups and some of these other spirits because, you know, they're, they, they're, uh, they're not, they don't get me, but humans do. <laughs> okay. All right. And Alini was um, wanting to know, or she says there's an abundance of crop circles uh, lately in yeah. England, and she wants to know, are they positive? They're all crop circles are usually warnings. Yeah. You're usually a positive thing for Earth. They try to tell Earth humans what is coming and what to do and what to stop and all that kind of thing. They're 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 mostly warnings, but they're never a full statement on one crop circle. It's always in conjunction with other crop circles. 
particles of the same energy pattern. Now, how has he pattern? These crop circles were made from underneath the ground. Some of these crop circles are made from over top of the ground, and some of them are man-made. So the man-made ones are always very obvious because the, 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 uh, the grain or grass does not stay down all the way. It's, uh, but the real crop circles are actually have some change in their makeup. There's extra energy in the in the um, their activity. Uh, oh, there's yeah. Okay, we're we're losing you a little bit. Our connection was very good for a while, but now it's getting a little bit choppy. Oh, oh, oh dear. Sorry. We'll put this online from this room, this video camera, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's been perfect up until just a, a second ago. So maybe if we give it give it a moment, it'll it'll well, come out again. They didn't, want, they didn't want me to tell the answer. crop energy of their own. And those crop circles work together to make a message. If there's a certain energy in several crop circles that is the same, put those ones together. The scientists already know this. And some of them have musical messages as well as uh, verbal messages. But uh, the, the actual grain itself or whatever is being uh, used as um, the palate is changed by radioactivity or sometimes ions or neurons and things of that nature. But the man-made ones are less perfect and also the, the grass doesn't stay down and it's not charged by any kinds of uh, elements. Okay. Um Kim Lackey would like to ask you, uh, Grendel, for protection from negativity. She's having a hard time right now with her thoughts. Very well. No problem. Um, I will send her some protection immediately, and I hope that uh, she is doing well. Thank you. And uh, Marsha uh, wants to know about, um, whoa, I don't understand. I don't understand yeah. her question. She says, many stone hinge we have on the planet doesn't need balance. I don't know what that means. So can if it's, Marcia, can you retype your question? It's a very incomplete question. So um, Sheer has a question. In the meantime, we'll ask uh, Marcia to uh, retype. Yeah, I think, I think I understood it, but go ahead and get the full question. Grindo. Yeah. Speaking about crop circles, I feel kind of left out since uh, Israel doesn't experience any crop circles and there's many fields around where I live, so <laughs> if you could send a couple of messages over there, it will be wonderful. Uh, Israel is a little harder to get crop circles in because there's too much surveillance. The areas in England and London where they get uh, outside of London and in the... Uh, United Kingdom where they get crop circles. There is a lot of alien activity on the northern islands there. What are they called? The Falkland Islands? There's lots of alien activity there, so they're very close by to give crop circles in that area. Uh, so if in if any spaceships goes around my house and they want to put a graffiti on my roof, they can feel very welcome. <laughs> nice. Uh, very good. I don't think they're going to do graffiti, though. Um, um, when they have circles, there's residue stuff like radiation or ions or whatever. So that's probably true. Thank you. Okay, we're frozen almost again. All right. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Um, we have. Uh, yeah. Can you can you hear us or no? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Believe, do you, you know, in the Netherlands where I live up in the northern part in Groningen, there's a lot of crop circles that happen. It's not known for that. The world doesn't focus mostly on the UK, but they happen here as well. Of course. Um, they happen in a lot of places where there's not a great deal of surveillance. Yeah. The reason why that is true is because with surveillance, it takes a little time to make a crop circle and they can be definitely, uh, they can definitely uh, find those ships that are making the crop circles. And so they go to the areas with less surveillance. And so they can get away with it a little better. Um, Tracy says that she thinks of you during her meditation and she hopes that you, uh, that you feel it. Excellent. I, you know, I like it when people call me for their meditations because I like to come in and give them a, a couple thoughts for what they're doing because I understand nah, some of their reasonings for meditations, intentions and things. So I like to give them a little positive push. Yeah, yeah. And Michelle Euro would also like protection. Yeah. As long as you're, if as long as you're giving it out, she would like some as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And yeah, that's all we'll the questions. Oh, actually, there's one more question. Um, Ecclesiast uh, asks about um, translucent orbs. He goes, "Are they yeah. are they tra are they transitioned beings or extraterrestrials or both?" Thank you. They can be both. Let me explain to you what an orb is. The blue colored orbs are usually spirits from your planet. Now, there are other colored orbs that are spirits also, but they're different kinds of spirits from your planet. So, but there are also orbs that are used as ships. They're usually bigger. The smaller orbs are usually encapsulated spirits. But there are some smaller versions of the, the ships that are around, but they're usually not blue. They're like magenta, deep, deep, or deep colors. And uh, the, the lighter medium blues are like the spirits. Yeah, yeah. They can also be uh, earth elementals and things like that, is right, or? Yes, ab absolutely, yes. Okay, okay. I don't have any other questions on this side. Do you have any questions more in that room? I, I don't know. I can't see. There is. Hi, friend Bill Michigan again. It just you were talking about crop circles at the very quick and how it changes the wheat. Yes. Or the field. Yeah. Now, isn't it making it healthier for us to eat? Um, not necessarily. That is what they put into and radiation doesn't help. No. It actually starts eating away at the material that is the grain. But there the uh, the changes that happen in the grain are not a positive thing usually. Thank you. That must be time for me to leave. Yeah. What time is it, dude? We have All about right. 17 minutes left. All right. Does anybody else have a question or should I go and leave somebody coming? One, for more, one more question from Don. Don, do you want to ask the question yourself? Don, oh, okay. Yes, I can do that. Yeah. I was just wondering who built the stone monoliths beneath Lake Michigan? That's a good question. And it's the same people that built the, uh, uh, that did Easter Island. Uh, they were a, a race of giants, but during that period of time when they were here, that was not a lake. It was before glacier activity came through that area. So they were, they had built that and, um, well, they came and rebuilt them afterwards, but there was still not a lake there. Uh, but it, it's the giants that did the Easter Island Okay, thank, you. thank you. Gratitude, Randall. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. That's a. I can tell you all about that later. Okay. Yeah, they rebuilt them twice. Okay. All right, I'm gonna let you go. There's other ones that want to talk. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so for now, okay? Much love to you, much Brenda. Love to you. Much love. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. All right, getting out of here. Damn. Greetings, this is Metatron. Greetings, Metatron. I'm only here for a few moments to give you a closing prayer, to let you know that we are watching over in this particular group and many other groups of, of this nature. Is it all right if I pray for you? Absolutely. <laughs> Mia Tara Zanzibat Tara Menu Adenai Kashabondi Taria Manat Ali and Gay one cannot be watched with the earth. Elia Kamiato Torias and Diato Toria Manura Alalanda Kashich on the sea. Furia Eskiaramatu. I don't like yes. Musquati Sila Halalanduqua Alenuka yes and Fushi Tian Sandu Koshipiandi Tanamani La Handi Kashan Sundu Ten Sila Kash Mokwata that's a boat. I deny Kakwati, Alien Gay one door. Chikata Chikata La Hatra Sons of Riata Maguya Uya Yansisi and Zivandi Kataramba Utiata Mwandu Pata Shanzi. Ula Andi Tokran. Amen and Amen. May God be praised. And may you be lifted up. Your time here is not finished, and there is much to do. I will go now, and this will be the finish of your day. Many blessings and much love. Much love to you. Hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. Ed, I'm back. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. How is everybody doing? Very good. We had a we long ripple session. session. Wow, well, that's unusual. Yeah, it was really special. Yeah. Excellent. Yes, I'm. I'm sure he would appreciate that a lot. Yeah. He's very appreciative. All right. Does anybody want to say a closing blessing? If you do on our side of the room, just put a message in the chat. And, uh, in your room, I, you have to let me know. Anybody want to close? do a closing breath, blessing? Okay. Barbara, Barbara in this room does. Okay. And Sapphira does. Okay. Okay. Anybody in, the, in your room? Michelle, I don't Euro see anybody. Euro. Michelle, Michelle Euro would like to do a toning. Oh, okay. She's in YouTube chat. Oh, she's in the YouTube chat. 
Oh, I don't so know how that will work. Um, she wants you all to do toning, she means, I think. Oh, she wants what? She would like you guys to do a toning, just like you did oh, to Oprah. Oh, she would like us to do a toning. Okay. <laughs> that would be I don't know how she would do it from the YouTube chat. I think if she means you guys. I don't know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Safira said she'll do toning for her blessing. Okay. All right, very good. Barbara, would you like to start? Go ahead. The life that flows through us all is given to us as a gift from God. Let us be praised. Let us praise God for this gift and give him praise. The gift that he gave for the and for the greatest benefit to the world. Jesus is the Messiah and Lord God of all things. I will add to the message and tell you that he is with you always. Thank you. I'll do one. And Angie will do one. Great. Your friends in the astral and in the universe are sending hope that you continue as a species and a timeline. We are praying for your ev every day and for your constant existence. For you are hope for the galaxy and for our neighborhood to be even more fulfilled. Thank you. All right, I think that's it. Okay, well, it's been a wonderful webinar. We've had some moments of clarity, sharpness, and blurriness and everything in between, but for the most part, the video did very well. So we're very thankful for that. Oh, we, we made it through. <laughs> <laughs> and we thank you for all of your uh, wonderful channeling and all the questions that came from everybody in the chat and in the Google room, but also in your room. And we wish you an amazing rest of your uh, uh, workshop. And we look forward to hearing all the stories. So. All right, very good. They yeah. have filmed this, so they'll put this on YouTube as well as the one you're going to upload. So Perfect. there'll be two versions of this one. One will be our video and one will be your video. Okay, perfect. Well, right. this has been the Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar. You can go to hukalo.org forward slash webinar if you would like to join and, and be part of Club Hukalo, and that helps us support all of the activities that go on in Human Colony for $10 a month. Your contribution goes to running the webinars, supporting our YouTube pages, supporting our website, and all of the classes that we offer, as well as uh, the channeling. So thank you so much for all of your support, everyone that is a member. And if you aren't a member, please join. Also, just below on the screen, make sure if you are not subscribed to the Hukalo 2 channel, you subscribe. Just click that little button down there. I can't see it, but I know it's there. 
And next week, uh, we have Susie Beyer. She is a wonderful channel, and she'll be channeling next week on Human Colony. So she is really good. I like her. Yeah. So till then, oh, and also, I know oh, go ahead. <laughs> And also, too, uh, we're going to start on uh, once a month. We're going to do a Sunday show, which will be the Hukalo Sunday Extra Show, just once a month. But we'll have some people on there that aren't necessarily channelers, but are some different teachers and have some wonderful things to talk about. So coming up next week, we're going to I'll announce it as we get closer. But we'll have our first uh, Hukalo Sunday Extra Show. So, all right. Excellent. Thanks. Mm. Much love to you and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.